On the 9th of February 2012, during our Supernatural Week, we posed the question, do aliens exist? Well, debating the issue was Detective Constable Gary Hesseltine, who says that he could prove in a court of law that aliens do exist, and psychologist and sceptic Professor Chris French. Well, during that debate, a challenge was set. When it comes Absolute to sighting, you say we have special trainings for sighting UFOs. No, no, well, that's what I'm saying. What police officers trained to do? Right. I'll put you a challenge. I'll give you some evidence, and I want somebody like Chris here to explain it. To me. Well, Chris, I'd love that. Well, let's do it. That's it. It's we're booked. Well, and well, here they are. And here they are. Today we are looking at Gary's evidence from one case in particular, a case thought to be Britain's most famous UFO sighting, and one that hit the headlines at the time. In late December 1980, a series of reported sightings of unexplained light and unidentified craft landings occurred in Rendlesham Forest, Suffolk. The two incidents took place in the vicinity of two former military bases, RAF Bentwaters and RAF Woodbridge, which at the time were being used by the American Air Force. On the 26th of December, military personnel witnessed strange lights in the forest. Thinking an aircraft might have crashed, they went to investigate. It's reported that what they found was a small triangular shaped metal craft with strange markings. Two days later, the deputy base commander and a small group of men witnessed other strange lights through the forest trees, including a red sun-like light which moved about and pulsed. Despite witness accounts, the MOD did not investigate any further as they didn't believe it was a threat to national security. Well, we've got uh, Chris and Gary with us now. Welcome back, both Welcome. of Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so we're going to do this as a sort of a, an argument, counter-argument, and, uh, and we're going to start uh, straight away uh, with, uh, with the first sighting, the early hours of the 26th of December, 1980. Military personnel at these bases saw strange lights in the forest. Tell us about that first sighting. Initially, two men out at the East Gate uh, observed lights just above the forest top about 300 metres away, they went three football pitches and basically they went out to investigate, they got very spooked by it, went back on the base, reported it to the control and asked for backup. Backup arrived, two more people came out and then three of those officers went out into the forest where they eventually, two of them eventually came across the landed on. Now you have uh, your evidence uh, here is, uh, is the Holt Memorandum, Lieutenant Colonel Charles Holt uh, logged what the security police patrolman saw the first night and gave his memorandum to the MOD, uh, which is uh, dated the 13th of January 1981. And this is, and you can see when you look at the, uh, this, this report here, individual report is seeing a strange glowing object in the forest, object described as being metallic in appearance, triangular in shape. I'll let you leave that up for a few seconds and you can, you can read, that, uh, read that yourself. There so, you go. So that's your bit of evidence on this. Chris, how would you counter that? Well, we know that what caused this, this actual investigation in the first place was a fireball. Um, it's a bit of natural space debris that's coming back through the Earth's atmosphere. It's very spectacular. It lasts two or three seconds, and it's very often confused for a possible plane crash. It looks a lot closer than it actually is. So that's what sparked the the people to actually go into the forest in the first How place. How do you know that happened there above that? We've got a record of right. that. That was officially recorded by the British Astronomical Association at 2.50, very precisely. How can you interrupt a triangle that is a, from here to where Philip is? The triangle... It was the, on the, the ground, he touched it, he walked around it. Again, it. please let me speak, I didn't let you I'm speak. I'm sorry, it's, you can't... The, I'm sorry, the, you can't, you can't, the, the original sighting was of a fireball. Nobody's saying that the reports of a triangle were, were the same fireball. What then happened is they went into the forest and basically what they were yeah, they were, they were scared, they were confused, they didn't know the terrain. It was their first time in the forest at night, mm. and they were mistaking the Orford Nest Lighthouse for... Well, the... the, the, the sorry, go on, Phil. The, uh, only the fact that, uh, going back to the Holt Memorandum, uh, the illuminated, it illuminated the entire forest with a white light, uh, possibly a fireball, uh, that, 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 okay. The object itself had a pulsing red light on top and banks of blue lights underneath, says this, the witness. This is based on the... This is based on the witness statements that didn't actually come out until several years later. This is what Holtz based his memorandum on. And the fact that they were reporting different colours. There's three different things involved here. The first, there's the fireball. That's what makes this an intriguing case. First, you've got the fireball. Then you've got the mistaking of the Orphan Ness lighthouse, which accounts for much of what they were seeing. And some of the objects they were seeing were just simply stars. They were, they were, they were tired. They'd been out there for a long a time. Military personnel? Can, can yes, and there's, there's many, many records of that. Okay. There's lots, on, on, lots of stuff on Gary's website where they've been definitely explained as sightings of Venus, but Gary won't tell you that. Gary won't give you those links. Let's, uh, let's Gary, Gary, you can come back on this one. The whole, the whole case 
fundamentally bases on the Holt Memorandum. The Holt Memorandum was nothing more than a little brief, but one key thing here, let's look at... Holt went out with a team of men on that second night, five people. They're out there and an object, and he describes it on the audio tape, comes towards him. It stops a thousand to two thousand feet above him. It then shines down a laser beam at his feet for twenty seconds. They are all in awe. He's thinking, is it a communication? Is this a weapon? He's scared, really scared. Then it goes off and it goes off to the sky. The skeptics will say this is a flying lighthouse. No, this is not a flying lighthouse. It's not in the Holt Memorandum. You just show me where that is. The Holt Memorandum was... The Holt, it is not in the Holt Memorandum, as he's just claimed. It no, was of something, it wasn't. It was, it was something a brief. That was, it was something that was added to the later. MOD. Hmm. And also, isn't it slightly weird that it wasn't in the Holt Memorandum? Wouldn't you think... He didn't that, want to write it, had, full stop. Then, if that had really happened, the defence implications of that are staggering. Hmm. And yet Holt, after this whole episode, doesn't include that in, t in the memorandum. He was which isn't scared written, for his what career. About, which isn't what about security police later? officer Jim Penniston, who apparently got close enough to touch the object? He said he, he carried out a 45-minute investigation, took plaster casts of the landing traces, which, which were on a, on a tree, and and he drew, uh, and that, and that's evidence again. He didn't. He drew, he drew yeah. what he thought he saw. The on original it. drawing that he made on the night looks nothing like a triangular craft. It's a boxy type. Appearance. You can get links to the If you go to, to that's a different this? drawing. That's a different right. drawing. If you go to Ian, Rid, if, if, you go, if you go to Ian Ridpath's website, you can find all ah, the background Ian detail Ridpath, on this. Skeptic. And Dr. David Clark. Ah, they, Dr. They, David they, Clark. Unlike, times, unlike Gary, they don't deal just with one side of the evidence. They I deal with the facts. Sides. And, and they offer very convincing e explanations. So, you know, in, 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 in the case of these, the, the case by Penniston didn't actually make any claims about actually touching the craft until years and years later. And also Burroughs, who was with him at the time, says that did not happen. Uh, All they reported, Burroughs said it didn't happen. Penniston made those claims years somebody's later. Somebody's unreliable there, Gary. Which one is it, mate? The, the bottom line is they were uh, both very scared. They went out in the forest oh, and they came so across Chris. a landed object something which you don't see every day. These are highly trained police officers. They saw it, they were walked not, around They it. were not police officers. Gary. They were U.S. Air Force police officers. All right, but the... the, the Can I answer the question? On, yes. on. Right, so basically, he walked around it, he touched it, he described it as glass-like, it pulsed, there was no motors, it was triangular, in, he drew that in his police pocketbook. He went back to his base commander and he was scared. Who wants to say that they've seen a UFO? Because you ridicule it. Why do you think he doesn't say straight away to his commander, uh, I've actually seen a landed craft, oh, get out of it, you're a nutter. Yeah. So he no, played it down, enough. he that played it down, enough. and then he was told, go back in daylight and see if there's any physical evidence, and he went back and he found the indentations. Y yes, the indentations the... were three identical indentations, they were to the same depth, same size, same de size of depression, and when two days later Holt out went out with his men, he had a guy encounter, and it peaked right in that spot. It's not about so how much it was, it's untrue. about how it spiked. This is, this is untrue. This is untrue. You can listen to the whole tape. Even Nick you Pope look, said this. Nick Pope knows nothing about radiation. Who's Nick Pope? Nick Pope ran the MOD desk for, between 91 and 94, and even he made investigations okay. into his, the his radiation, said it peaked his, into okay. seven right. times and more. What do you he about asked that? another person. He never left his desk. He never went to yeah. Rendlesham Forest. He never interviewed any of the, of the first time. The, the, people, for the, the people that did, what, what Nick did was to say, assume, basically assuming that the Holt memorandum was accurate, which it wasn't. The, the Geiger counter they were using, as the manufacturers have confirmed, was the wrong sort to be using for that kind of measurement. They, the readings that they claimed to get were the bottom, lowest kind of possible measure the that they is could when they put get, it in the landing and site, it, they did then, not peak at it the peaked. At the, okay the, what about let's leave it there for a second yeah let's um let's move on to the second sighting that we had it's this, this is Holt. this to us yeah well Holt sighted two days later he is at a uh, military function a christmas party when basically he's told the ufo is back he goes what, what's back the ufo's back so he gets a team of specialists he goes out with geiger counter he goes out with cameras he goes out with light holes big light structures to light up the illuminate the forest and he went out with a star scope which pr produces latent heat whilst he was out there he basically at the landing site doing the measurements which we've just talked about he then somebody says there's a light moving through the trees here's the key thing the light was moving under the canopy of the forest. So that couldn't be the light. Why didn't he no. take a camera if he was this, taking all that the stuff? The photographs came out pog fogged, but that could maybe be down to radiation. Okay, this, so this, we we'll just okay, want to listen to the audio tape yeah, here, okay. Chris, then you yeah. can counter after He was that. recording a live event, a here we series. Go. This is the audio recording from that night. 
There's no doubt about it that if you are out in those, such as, those circumstances where you're scared, you don't know the terrain, you don't know what you're looking at, that anything that, for example, if there's a thin cloud cover passing across in front of the lighthouse, it would kind of dim, dim it kind of gradually and then it might appear more brightly. So it would look as if it's coming towards you or moving. We have it. another but, audio clip here about and the lighthouse. Lighthouses, don't we? This is crucial because this evidence clinches the, the lighthouse argument. <laughs> right on this position here, straight ahead in between the tree. There it is again. Watch straight ahead off my flashlight there, sir. Yeah, there it is. Hey, I see it too. Chris? Now, the synchrony there between what they're actually saying and the, the video of the lighthouse shows, it's five seconds exactly, that it shows that's what they were looking at. They didn't know what they were looking at. And under those circumstances... Philip, he took his team out for four and a half hours into the forest. Four see, and a half hours? You can hours? see, here it is. This is how yeah. close the lighthouse is to the forest. And this, this is about. taken from the exact position that they would have been at with the farmhouse that they refer to here in the foreground. Okay. And the lighthouse is, is visible from that point. Your turn. Right. I stood with Holt. Have you stood with Holt at the edge of that farmer's field? No, I've been to the I have, field. and I've stood at the edge of the farmer's field from this perspective, and this is a drawing he gave me, a representation. When they followed the object underneath the canopy of the trees, they got to a farmer's field. Across they see the farmhouse. I said, where is the object in relation to the farmhouse? He describes it as a 15 foot off the ground, glowing red. The farmhouse looked as if it was on fire. That is, are you sitting sure? Where is it? To the left of the farmhouse. Can you show me where the lighthouse is? No, to no, the no. right of the farmhouse. Right. It was not a lighthouse. Lighthouses not can fly and stop above your head no, and shine please. a beam down at your ground. Lieutenant Colonel Holt is one of the most highly respected men ever to go on record to say he saw multiple UFOs. And if all your skeptics' arguments stand up and say that it's a flying lighthouse, then good luck to Nobody you. Nobody has ever said it's a flying lighthouse. Nobody's ever said that any, that all of the sightings are explicable in terms of lighthouse. A lot of it is. Ten seconds each now to wrap it up, I'm afraid. Right. If this really were true, why did he wait two weeks before he actually even put in a memorandum? If it, he actually left when he thought we were under alien attack. He actually left when he thought that nu nuclear weapons were being zapped by aliens. Is that... Did he really think it was an alien invasion? No, I don't think so. I spent four years working with Holt. There is a film script ready to go. It's viable. I've written it. He's worked with it. It's endorsed by him. It's an amazing story, much more complicated than what we've got in this limited time. Thank you for letting me on. Brilliant. That's fascinating. Absolutely really fascinating. fascinating. Thank, Thank you both. Well Thank you very much. Well. <laughs>